Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming right up, we've got the latest with a case involving a fight between friends that turned fatal. The military and GovGuam officials meet at the museum to discuss the programmatic agreement and the military buildup. And Guam's governor joins America's president signing an executive order in D.C. Hot today and good evening everybody if you're watching us live on KUAM TV 8, Facebook Live or watching the behind the scenes view on Instagram Live. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Well, your elected leaders are going to keep their reasons. That's right, Jason. It was the first bill they discussed on session. but. One of the very last bills they voted on this afternoon. The governor's veto of Bill 4 failed to garner enough votes for an override. The legislation introduced by Senator Frank Ugin Jr. would have repealed the raises of senators, lieutenant governor and governor. Ten votes were needed. Only nine voted in favor of the override. Voting no were senators Tom Atta, Will Castro, Fernando Estevez, Tommy Morrison, and Luis Munya. Senator Talina Nelson was excused. She was not present. Additionally, even though a $100 million RFP is on appeal at the public auditor's office. Lawmakers passed legislation to change the process to rebuild Simon Sanchez High School and renovate dozens of other schools. Bill 58 introduced by Senator Tom Atta passed during session this afternoon. It will head to the governor's office for review. It could be another showdown between the legislature and Adeloup come tomorrow morning. Adeloup pushing for passage of legislation to pay out tax refunds quicker, while a certain senator has already hinted he might slam the brakes on any further borrowing effort. Adeloupe fiscal team member Lester Carlson delivers the news. Just today, we, there's a posting on KOM that Senator Sir Nicholas uh, is not taking any action whatsoever on Bill 73. Bill 73 is the governor's initial tax and revenue anticipation note or TRAN bill calling for a $73 million line of credit to pay tax refunds within weeks rather than in months. Senator Michelson Nicholas, however, says Bill 73 borrows for operations and, quote, thus is not eligible for consideration as per the standing rules passed by the legislature. Bill 1S is mirror legislation and introduced because of inaction on Bill 73. The governor called senators into a special session on Friday morning to discuss his bill. Another public hearing on Bill 1 was held at Adeloupe Wednesday evening. Acting Governor Ray Tenorio. The violation of the standing rules is no reason to deny someone their tax refund. About one dozen people shared their stories. I'm a, I'm a father of seven. I have other expenses that need to be taken care of, medical bills that need to be paid. All we ask for is to please release the tax refund. I was skeptical at first because I'm against GovGuam getting into any more debt. After learning more about this bill, I understand now that we'll be able to be paying the money back by the end of the year, and it will actually save us money on interest. Is it okay with you if you don't get your tax refunds? And the reason is because the bill by the, the standing rules of the legislature. As a private citizen, that's going to be a lot of explanation for me to do standing rules. My students, my kids don't care. Just pay them. That's all they want to hear. Senator Michelson Nicholas, meanwhile, says the TRAN is nothing more than business as usual, borrowing for operations in order to float the overspending of the government. No more. Adeloupe, on the other hand, says that's his opinion. The legislature is a body of 15 individuals, not a body of one. The special session on the governor's TRAN bill is scheduled for 9 o'clock Friday morning in the Guam Congress building. In other island news headlines, a programmatic agreement paved the way for the military buildup, as the 2011 document is essentially an agreement between the U.S. military and Guam, providing guidance on how to mitigate adverse effects to historic properties. But over the past six years, what's actually been done with it? Issa Baza reports on today's annual review of the agreement held in the island's capital. Six years and counting since the programmatic agreement was first signed by officials from Guam and the U.S. military. 
Stakeholders discussed the agreement's progress at an annual meeting Thursday morning. One of the biggest accomplishments of the programmatic agreement is that it has led to a $12 million appropriation for the Guam Cultural Repository. The appropriated funds to construct this facility are now authorized under the 2017 National Defense Authorization Act. Marine Corps Activity Guam spokesperson Major Tim Patrick said other accomplishments include a database for cultural resources, the successful nominations of five Guam historic properties, updates to the Guam State Historic Preservation Plan, and more. But the topic that garnered the most interest was a proposed repository, which will house hundreds of boxes of artifacts that Marine Corps Activity Guam Environmental Director El Borja said are currently housed with the National Park Service. They have a uh, federally compliant curation facility and uh, we're, we're working with them to ultimately get all of our artifacts into their facility so that we can meet federal standards. So the, the, only, the only restriction on their storage is that human remains cannot be stored at their facility because of, because of their own internal rules. Vice Speaker Therese Terlahi was critical of the military's efforts, raising concerns that the $12 million for the repository may not be enough considering the labor shortage and inflation since 2012. She also questioned whether the military has fully complied with the PA, given its failure to fund a complete museum complex that would display artifacts for the public's benefit. In addition, she questioned why historic properties in Finnegadzen and North Westfield will be disturbed by military activity when they were eligible for the National Register, and raised concerns about the proposed firing range at Retidian that was not contemplated in the current PA. Governor Eddie Calvo also raised concerns about the PA earlier this month, citing rampant H-2B visa denials. Joint Region Mariana's spokesperson, Lieutenant Tim Gorman. We've heard his concerns. We have relayed them to the highest uh, chain in the Department of Defense. Uh, I understand that he's in D.C. right now. Uh, he met with the Deputy Secretary of Defense today, I believe. And uh, we, all, all we can do at this point is relay his concerns to higher authority. The one-day meeting ended this afternoon. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. Governor Eddie Calvo in the nation's capital watching as President Donald Trump signs an executive order calling for a review of designations of national monuments under the Antiquities Act of 1906. Today I'm signing a new executive order to end another egregious abuse of federal power and to give that power back to the states and to the people where it belongs. The executive order does not remove any monuments and does not weaken any environmental protections, any public lands. President Trump signed the order following a March letter from Governor Calvo, CNMI Governor Ralph Torres, and American Samoa Governor Lolo Moliga, asking him to remedy the restrictions on fishing in waters surrounding the Pacific Island territories and Commonwealth. The governor says the restrictions are unnecessary and impede our socioeconomic and cultural stability. Calvo says the order is a positive step and a sign that the current administration hears the concerns of the states and territories. The order was signed at the Department of the Interior today. The United States Navy has launched an investigation into the crash that happened in the waters off Guam early Thursday morning. Two pilots and an air crewman were safely recovered by the USS Dewey after their Seahawk helicopter crashed during routine flight operations. No injuries were reported, and according to the U.S. Navy release, the crew was assessed by the medical team aboard the guided missile destroyer. The copter belonged to the Helicopter Marine Squadron 78, currently embarked aboard the Dewey, which is deployed from San Diego in March. Well, stay tuned. We have got a lot more news, but before we go to break, we have a couple of people we'd like to say and give some shout-outs to. Yeah, they are watching us. As we mentioned, we are on Instagram Live right now and every night, so you can get a behind-the-scenes view of us on the news desk right now. We want to say shout-out to Kimberly, Kakoa, to Joy, uh, our friend Emily in Nebraska, really good people, and William, uh, William underscore I am underscore radical which is probably one of the best handles <laughs> we have seen. Yeah, so make sure to join us on Instagram Live, see what we're doing here. And also a uh, big shout-out to everybody watching us right now on Facebook Live. That's right. We'll Stay be back. Stay tuned. Now. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store.
Have you gotten paid yet? That's the premium automatic insurance deduction plan from Calvo's Insurance. Paid simplifies your home and auto insurance. No down payment. No more long lines. And you can stretch your payments up to 12 months. Paid is convenient. It deducts from your payroll, your checking account, or your credit card. With Paid, you get up to 65% off your car insurance and enjoy lifestyle club discounts. Life can be easier when you get paid. Call Calvo's Insurance today and save on your home and auto insurance. There is no place on Guam like Chuck E. Cheese's. It's tons of fun with so many games. And parties are a blast. Where everyone has fun. Come and party at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Call and book your party today. Two things come to play when talking about mobile data. Price and speed. Let's look at what happens when we compare the competition against it &E's $80 plan. Docomo's $79 plan comes with 6 gigs. it &E's $80 plan comes with 20. GTA's $80 plan comes with 10 gigs. Better, but you get twice as much at it &E. it &E has the best network and the data to back it up. Get unlimited talk and text and 20 gigabytes for $80 at it &E. Oh, and if you bring your own device, get 40 gigs. Get more during our spring clearance event going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Inherit that go anywhere attitude with the legendary rugged Jeep Wrangler 4x4 of the decade. For a limited time only, enjoy savings of $2,500 off. Or go beast mode and save up to $5,000 off Ram trucks voted Guam's best two years in a row. Plus, well qualified buyers can get 0% financing. Get to Cars Plus today for quick and easy financing during our spring clearance event. Cars Plus, driven by you. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. The two remaining defendants charged with the death of beloved bodyboarder Brian Cruz appeared in court. And as Crystal Paco reports, a judge has issued an oral decision on defense's motions to sever the charges. It started in Tumon, but ended in Hagatnya. And according to a verbal decision issued by Judge Michael Berdalio in court on Thursday, the charges against defendant J.C. White will be severed. That means he'll go to trial twice, once for the murder of bodyboarder Brian Cruz and a second trial for rioting at Linda's Cafe. Although the incidents occurred within an hour of each other, defense's motion requested they be dealt with separately because the video evidence taken from both scenes may be used by the jury inappropriately. As we reported, White allegedly sucker punched Cruz here in Tumon. Cruz was knocked unconscious and friends Alfredo Castro and Richard Regadio assisted White in carrying Cruz to the back of a sedan. That's where the men then proceeded to Linda's Cafe and a riot broke out. Police then discovered Cruz still unconscious in the back of a car. He died days later from severe head injuries. In their motion to sever, attorney Randy Cunliffe provided the court a snapshot of what to expect in the murder trial, that White will be justifying his actions as self-defense and defense of a third person. White will be tried with co-defendant Alfredo Castro. The court didn't disclose which trial would come first. Already, Richard Regadio pleaded guilty to hindering apprehension as a misdemeanor. Regadio faces no jail time on the condition he testify against his co-defendants. A follow-up hearing is set for June 15. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. Former Manila Mayor Nito Bloss will head to trial this summer after months of delay due to other asserted cases. Judge Michael Berdalio set the date for June 12th. Bloss stands accused of exposing himself to a female community service worker and asking if she did massages. He maintains the massage was strictly to address a leg injury he sustained while directing traffic in the village. A final pretrial conference is scheduled for May 11th. A Guam police officer was hurt and three people are under arrest after an incident here in Harmon last night. 18-year-old Kefirsten Cam Aiken has been charged with disorderly conduct, assault on a peace officer, obstruction of government functions, and resisting arrest. Two boys, ages 16 and 17, have also been taken to DYA as police were called to a report of three men hitting cars as they drove down Adrian Sanchez Street here in Harmon once again just after 5.30 last night. One man then got out of the car and attacked the responding officer before a second suspect hit the officer from behind. More cops showed up to help their fellow officer with the trio being arrested. The officer was treated at GMH for his injuries and is doing just fine.
It has now been one month since detainee Justin Menno was badly beaten inside the Department of Corrections Maximum Security Unit yard area. DEBCOR Director Tony Lamarona says they've since assigned their special operations response team to ensure the safety of their officers and the population. He says it could be another week before the findings of the IA are released. We want to make sure that the, we're very precise with the investigation. Um, you know, as a former civil service uh, director, you want to make sure that uh, any any allegations made against employees uh, that you, you have, you know, your your reports uh, and and uh, the investigation very precise in regards to making sure that if if in fact adverse actions are are given, that uh, you know you have probable cause for that. Both the officers on duty and the 40-plus inmates and detainees at post 6 that day have been questioned. GPD's criminal investigation is ongoing as well. Menno has been at GMH in stable condition since the attack. Frustration is growing over an ongoing complaint over at the port as GM Joanne Brown told board members today that they're awaiting a decision from the PUC regarding a complaint filed against them by Cementon Micronesia. That organization filed the complaint last June arguing that their competitor, Hansen, does not pay the same wharfage fees that they do to operate on the property. Yet Brown contends the lease agreements between the two companies are extremely different. Relaying my frustration and disappointment uh, that this is how they've chosen to proceed because to me in a bit, it's a bit adversarial and I think unnecessary at the end of the day considering all the things we have done. Again, the port is waiting for a decision from the PUC as news files say Cement and Micronesia sealed the deal in 2009 to be the bulk cement terminal that would help with the expected high demand from the military buildup. Sports is coming up next, but first, here's weather. Can a modern family save money when companies ding you with surprise charges? I mean seriously, data caps on home internet? <laughs> I hate to be the bad guy here, but somebody has to keep us from busting our monthly data limit. Sorry honey, we're out of data. But I'll tell you the ending. Glenn dies. My family just wants to enjoy the internet on their schedules. Why does this have to be such a hassle? Really, Mom? It's an online class. I need the internet to graduate. Then go to the library. They have free internet, right? This is so unfair. My thoughts exactly. <sighs> Just a few more minutes, please. I really don't want to nag. But money doesn't grow on... <sighs> There's got to be a better way. Free yourself. Switch to GTA Home Internet today. Truly unlimited with no data caps or additional usage fees. Let's welcome the first time parents, the people with the dream to be their own boss. Let's welcome the things that inspire us, connect us. Let's welcome the college graduations, new beginnings, and happy ever afters. At Bank of Hawaii, we'd like to welcome you to all the new adventures, the next chapters, and all the great things you have to look forward to. Welcome to tomorrow. Bank of Hawaii. How much do you pay for your unlimited mobile plan? Too much! Switch today to Value Mobile at $24.99 a month. It's the lowest priced unlimited mobile plan on Guam. Yes. $24.99. Value Mobile by iConnect gives you unlimited data, local calls, and local text, and a free phone, all with no contract. Value Mobile by iConnect, the lowest priced unlimited mobile plan at only $24.99 a month. Visit an iConnect store or valuemobileguam.com. Find us on Facebook. Conditions apply. There's a reason why you keep going. When it's your own hard work that brought you to this point, you do everything to protect what you've earned. Because every move that brings you closer to your goals leaves you no excuse but to keep moving forward. This is what makes you an Alpha.
From the moment you see it, it commands your respect. You can feel its immense power. The only way to master it is to venture inside. Go ahead, dive in. The GMC Sierra. We are a professional grade. Get 16% below MSRP on select Sierra 1500 crew cab vehicles in stock. That's over 9,000 on this Sierra. Visit Autospot GMC today. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Off a day, Guam. It's your boy, Chris Barnett with KUAM Sports, proudly brought to you by Triple J. Today, just a tremendous show for you today. We kick it off, as we often do, the last two Thursdays of every month, we profile an outstanding student athlete with Game Changers. Colleen Naden has goals, literally and figuratively. The George Washington Gecko senior striker is in cruise control as the Lady Geckos are currently undefeated in the IIAG Girls Soccer League at 7-0. Naden came up at Southern High winning a soccer title in her freshman year. She's finished in the top three every year of her high school career, scoring two goals but losing a tough game to Notre Dame in last season's final. Now she's an uptown girl transferring to GW for her senior year, looking to go out on top. I have a hardworking team with raw talent and they're willing to learn. And we all have the same mindset for championships. GW definitely has the right ingredients for a soccer title this season. Three of their starters play for the Masakata, Guam's national women's team. Nate had started with the Masakata as a 15 year old. She spent four years with the junior national team, and one of her many highlights, scoring a goal against wannabe nuclear power North Korea in international competition. Being a senior and being on the national team is, is honestly a big accomplishment for myself and my friend that um, we're able to travel with, the, with the Guam and represent Guam and uh, put our name out there and put our island out there. Naden has definitely put her skills on the pitch out there. She started with the Robbie Weber Youth Soccer League's Southern Heat, and she now plays for the four-time champs, the PFC Lady Crushers. She's a three-time Golden Boot Award winner. She was also selected as an All-Island forward her freshman and sophomore years at Southern, and in her junior year, she was a first-team midfielder. What she really deserves an award for? Like many scholar-athletes, Colleen juggles academics and athletics successfully. You always have friends help you out and you're motivated to do your schoolwork because you can't play sports if you don't do your schoolwork. And she has some good advice for other student athletes too. Do your work because a lot of these uh, student athletes, they're not able to participate in school sports because they don't get their schoolwork done. So school first. Naden also excels at rugby. She was an all-island top try scorer for Southern in her sophomore year. Soccer and rugby are her go-to sports, but she even played tennis for Southern. Now she's focused on bringing home the girls' soccer title for GW. She scored a hat trick against St. John's recently, and although she has her eyes set on what she'll do after high school, she's fully focused on the field. Right now, I plan on going to UOG for my first year, and hopefully... Um, I'm able to transfer over to Hawaii Pacific University or another college that will give me a place tomorrow morning at 11 at the Verona Hotel in Tumon. Black Belt competitors from Brazil, Ecuador, Hong Kong, Japan, and Our local people can come out and uh, showcase their jiu-jitsu and uh, their hard work. For this, uh, for this one event. A portion of the tournament's net proceeds will be donated to...
Keep on shining, Guam, and hey,